Do you really need drugs? And why do doctors think you really need drugs? I had an interesting weekend. I was traveling. We're building a clinic in Florida right now, and I was speaking to several local doctors there. And um, it's, it's an interesting viewpoint that conventional medicine has about we Americans. Definitely, I am not in that category, but here's, the, here's what I'm talking about. Um, I was speaking to a doctor that said, you know, it's pretty simple if people ate right, if they drank enough water, if they exercised, and if they slept, and, and I have no disagreement with any of this. He said, if they just do those four basics, they'd be fine. Now, there's more to it than that, but are, are those some good foundational recommendations? Um, absolutely. And he went over something that I go over with patients all the time, which is that uh, why is it your cardiologist doesn't tell you that you could change diet and lifestyle and get off blood pressure medication? Why is it the same cardiologist doesn't tell you it's pretty easy to get off your cholesterol lowering medication? Why does your endocrinologist not tell you that type 2 diabetes is completely reversible? And we could go on and on, but let's just focus on those. Um, Heart disease is the number one killer, and uh, type 2 diabetes, I think, is ready, ready to overtake heart disease as if we keep going the way we're going. So if you sat down with said cardiologist and, or said endocrinologist, I was sitting down with a, uh, a general practitioner of internal medicine, and he said what they would say, which is that, sure, if they change their diet and lifestyle, they wouldn't need this medication, but they don't. And they're so convinced of that, they don't even sit down and have the conversation. They're so convinced you're unwilling to try that, you know, unless it's sort of this platitude of to the type two diabetic, well, you know, you should try to lose some weight. You should try to exercise and that's it. Just, you know, offhand. Um, I just found it so fascinating. It's a great guy, you know, he loves what he does and, and yet he's extremely convinced that this is the way it is. And, for us at Root Cause, practicing root cause medicine, also known as functional medicine, we, you know, we do the good fight. We're sitting in there with our patients saying, listen, these are na nasty diseases. These diseases are killing you. You can make a change. We will hold your hand through it. We will absolutely go hand in hand with you as you run into every obstacle of, oh my gosh, my family loves to go to pizza Friday night and I really don't do well with that and what could I do instead? And I mean, we're handling these kind of nuances of your day-to-day -day life for the greater good of restoring your health. And, and that's not too much to ask of us because your health means everything. It's a very different viewpoint. It's a very different viewpoint. I have a patient right now who has so much anxiety, he was ready to get on a plane to come here and had to cancel his trip. And a lot of people would go, all right, but no, I'm actually gonna call him on the phone and I'm gonna get with his wife and we're gonna figure it out because I know we can help him. It's, it's that extra mile that we go and is that 100% success? It isn't, it's closer to 85, which is still really, really good. Um, because we're willing to go that extra step and, and everyone deserves that. And sure, there's the person who's gonna go, um, give me the pill, I don't care. Fine, you're not, you know, you're not a root cause medical audience, <laughs> that's totally fine. But I feel better knowing I've educated you even if your answer is no. Because maybe one day in the future, when you're feeling less well and you're more frustrated with how you feel, you know, that little seed that I planted starts to germinate and you go, hmm, maybe now I'm ready. And that does happen. I have patients reach out and say, you know, I saw you about a year ago. I saw you two years ago. Sometimes as I saw you five years ago and they go, now I'm ready. I don't like how I feel. It's gotten worse. I tried the quick fix route. It didn't quick fix. As a matter of fact, it's, I'm, I've been getting worse and worse. So uh, anyway, I wanted to share that with you. And just as a last comment, the same doctor was saying how um, he didn't understand why people were taking bioidentical hormones. He's like, you know, women aren't, aren't supposed to make hormones after menopause. And I 
and again, such a nice guy, and I, uh, I only bit my tongue a little bit, but here's the truth of the matter, you know, here's a doctor who's, you know, very respected, and he's, he's recommending women stop their hormones. Now, again, where is he right? He's right about the fact that we shouldn't need them, but he's very wrong about the fact that you don't make them. <laughs> so your brain, every cell in your brain has receptor sites for sex hormones. For cognitive health the rest of your life, you need sex hormones. What happens is in menopause is your ovaries slow down so you're not fertile anymore. It's a big difference between being fertile and not making any hormones. You're designed to make hormones the whole rest of your life. Your adrenal glands make hormones. Your brain makes some hormones. And the problem is the adrenal gland, which is the stress gland, has gotten so overworked and overtaxed, it doesn't do what it should do. And that's why we come in with help with the bioidentical hormones. Sure, in a perfect world, a woman should just transition and make enough of these low-level, non-fertile sex hormones the rest of her life, such that her bones are strong and her heart is strong and her skin looks great and she holds on to her hair and she has a libido. Um, you know, and she doesn't have vaginal dryness and she has a brain that actually works. That's how these machines are designed to function until they're 120. That's by design. We're way short of that and it's okay to augment and give your body the help it needs because it's not okay to feel horrible. That's, it's not fair. It's not fair to you to feel horrible. So anyway, that was my little rant for the day. I just wanted to share because um, I love what we do. And every time I have a conversation <laughs> like I did this weekend, I love it more because I know how much help we can bring to those who are ready. And not everybody is, but if you are, we're happy to help. So give me a call, 408-733-0400, and we can talk on the phone and figure it out. I'll see you soon.